I know that for a lot of us all across the world who are adopted do struggle when it comes to attachments. For myself, I want to talk about a lot of these personal attachments here and there with people, including family, friends, and past relationships too, which really do play a big part of uh, part of my journey, part of my life. And everyone, everyone not only adopted people, but I do know a lot of people in general too. Everyone has a different mindset when it comes to attachments growing up, depends on your childhood, depends on your life, and depends on your environment. For myself as a child, of course, you know, being very young, coming from an orphanage for the first two years of my life to then coming to New Zealand, I didn't have a mother or father figure for the first two years of my life. I had caregivers that looked after me, and of course, that was, they did a great job as far as I was aware, but I never had that mother figure. So when my parents went over to adopt my brother and I from Archangel's Russia, right at the top, right at the north of Russia, I remember just when I was growing up, the first earliest memories I had, I always knew there was a mother and father figure around. For myself, I didn't want to let that attachment go. I built the circle of trust with my parents, of course, as a three-year-old. Those are the only people that are really around you 24-7 and you're so young to understand exactly everything. Growing up, of course, too, my friendships. Now, I had a lot of friendships in primary school, but I had a circle of friends that I only really stuck with all the time. I couldn't really be around, or I, I could be around other people, of course. I was shy. I was shy here and there. My confidence was up and down all the time. And there's a lot of things that I just really was shy to talk about. It also bring more people into my circle of friends, my friendship circle, all of that stuff as well. During primary school, I had a specific set of friends that I always stuck with. And we would bring in new people, of course. I was always open to having new friends, always open to that. But it took me a while to build that trust up with anybody new, no matter how how respected they are within their friends or their friendship with other people, I was just always taking my time. I was always taking my time. I'd always take my time when it came to meeting new people, always, just outside of that, my friends, my parents as well. And then later on in life, of course, with relationships. Now, talk about this as well. I remember, though, one of my earliest memories, and I brought this up once, just about when every every few years when we were children, we would have officials come all the way to New Zealand from overseas, from Romania, from other places where adoption took place in the 1990s. Romania, Ukraine, Russia, Indonesia, all those places. Officials would come to the families here in the 1990s just see how the children were. And I do remember very clearly when the Russian officials did come to the house as a child. I was very young. I was probably five years old. And I just remember getting so scared to be around them. They were speaking Russian. They were speaking with each other in Russian. <clears throat> My parents recall this very, very clearly, and they said that, hey, you just ran off and screamed, and you were just not wanting anything to do with these people. For myself, as my mindset as a five-year-old, of course, those connections there, I didn't want to attach myself to them. Maybe they'll say something that I just didn't want to be around. Maybe it brought up a, a bad, bad few little memories that I had obviously forgotten now, but back then I may have had a few memories that I just didn't want to bring them up again. I just didn't want them to be around me again. Those attachments in that in that regard, attachments I needed to let go. As soon as I came here as a child, I wanted to focus on that and those attachments with new people, I just wanted to stay with that. As I started to grow older and get into intermediate school and then eventually high school, I did make normal friends. I had a normal childhood. I had a great childhood. But of course, I was very picky with my friends. Of course I was picky with my friends, but I'm not saying I had no friends. I had a lot of friends and I had all sorts of friends. I had all sorts of friends. I would bring in all sorts of friends into my circle. But of course there was different levels of trust with every single friend in that regard, with, with all due respect in that regard. A lot of my best friends we could relate with so much. We had a support group as children from other children from other countries all across the world. So we also had that as well, which I could relate to so strongly as a child. My brother as well. I would never leave him, never let him leave my side. He was always, I would always look out for my brother as a child. And I still look out to my, I still look out for my brother. Of course, we're adults now. So, you know, he's married, he's got a wife, he's, He's, he's got his own life but as children I was always protective of my brother and I always just remembered so many things as children in primary school and intermediate and high school where I would always be around and protective of my brother and if something was to bother him I wouldn't like I never I never caused a fight or anything like that I never did that but I was always saying like hey this is my brother this is please respect his boundaries please respect my brother I grow this is my brother he 
I grew up with him. This is the most trustworthy person I know in my life. Person that's my age, you know, all of that stuff I grew up with and I wanted to connect with that so much as a child. When it came to after high school, now in high school I did get a lot of, I, I, I was a sensitive person. I am a sensitive person. If one thing bothers a friend, um, and that really upsets him, and then it upset, upsets me, it does end up upsetting me, I have to take that on board and understand what I've done wrong. That's one thing that I always grew up as a child, as an adopted child, if something was bothering somebody, I didn't want to upset anybody. I was always the people pleaser. I was always the yes man. This was one thing that I had to learn to take my boundaries out of and understand like, hey, you can say no sometimes. Sometimes I always, well, most times I would say yes, but I knew that people would take advantage of that and I knew that I had to stand back sometimes and understand that hey it's not always going to be a yes I if I don't want to burn myself out I can't always say yes like that but all of that stuff being a people pleaser I wanted to make sure everything was done right and made sure nobody disliked me and I it's just like it's just a normal feeling I had ever since I was as young as I could remember I always wanted to make sure that I didn't want to make sure everybody liked me. I don't worry about that. But, you know, of course people don't like me here and there. It's completely fine. It's called being human. But, of course, I wanted to make sure my friends were always pleased with everything that I did. And that's one thing. It almost got to a point as a child where I didn't want to bother people like that. I didn't want to be a worry, you know, as a child. I didn't want to be that worried child. Got into high school, of course. You grow up and you start to develop more, turning into an adult. And for myself, as turning into an adult... I had more questions to raise about where I had come from, and that was perfectly fine. I knew that I was going to be coming to this point and opening up this new chapter as a teenager. And when you hit te those teenage years, all those questions come about and that you want to get answered. That's definitely a big thing. That's when it all started as a teenager. Getting after high school, of course, you develop relationships. You start to fall in love. You start to, well, depends on when, you, when your first love is. But I started getting into a very serious relationship when I was 22 years old. And then that lasted for about three years. It was a very, very strong relationship. And I thought she was the one. You know, I, yeah, I thought she was the one. I was going to get, I thought marriage was around and all of this stuff. You know, I thought about that. We're living together, all of that stuff. But it didn't end up being like that. And that's completely fine. It was obviously my, my first biggest heartbreak at the time. But I understand those attachments. I built so much attachment with this person that was the last thing I wanted to let go and and I, I thought to myself if I don't have this person in my life how am I going to live that's what I thought like I just thought my, to myself I can't see any other different way about this the attachment side is so strong for myself and this is where I like to take everything in as I go and but also understand that if something really does knock you out as an adopted person you almost feel like you can you can never get back up but you eventually do of course you eventually do but it takes us a lot more strength this is not only with adopted people i'm i'm saying for myself from my own experience obviously it's always from my own experience all of this stuff is just all from other stories as well from other adoptees too and that connecting more with that is always taking another it's like going up going up harder steps always it's like opening a door but it's always locked and you have to always open up the with the pin code it's always going to take a little bit harder to get through that door but you eventually you, you eventually figure it out and this is the thing that i grew up understanding and to this point now i'm 30 years old i've still got long to go with this i've still got long more to go i've been on a few dates here and there but those connections of course are going to take me a little bit more confidence and a little bit more less shyness to connect with those those people and that's always going to take its own time eventually one day there'll be one girl that would say alex hey you you know we have so much in common that's what i love the commonness is so important to me and the laughing and joking and also talking very deep as well to each other growing a connection with somebody is so important to me and when you do grow a strong connection like that the last thing you want to do is ever let it go or you're afraid to ever for it to ever f stop that's one thing that I've had to come to terms with and understand that this is part of life but those attachments I always want to make sure they are there I have a lot of good friends I have a lot of great friends I love my family of pieces and when you know when you lose a loved one as well like through a death or it's pretty you know through a death or getting old and people move on and they're no longer with us that stuff is one thing that I do understand but also understand they're not going they're not going to come back and this makes things harder but also you have to push through that and 
that's okay. If things knock you down, you get back up, but it takes us a little bit longer time, a little bit more longer time to understand that and to figure it out. Also, the questions you may have, confusion and just questions about what if, what did I do wrong or am I really, am I really like this? Do people really think about this about me? Assumptions, you know, do these people think about this about me? But at the end of the day, we all got to stay positive for each other and grow those connections each day at the time. And for myself too, with my birth family, with my parents, with my brother, all of that stuff I have strong connections with but they're always at different levels always at different levels no connection in any relationship are always the same my parents I love to pieces I talk to them all the time my birth mother I talk to her on a rare occasion but I still talk to her but the connection isn't as strong but I know that I also don't want to lose that attachment of course I don't want to lose that attachment and if I do understand there are circumstances that can happen like that and but it's understanding that you have to be prepared for it ever losing a connection and that's one thing that I'm always trying to come to terms with as an adopted person for myself though you know that's all going to take its own time and I'm still growing older of course I still feel like I'm learning stuff every single day and sharing the journey and all those connections with all of you is just so important for myself though I take my own journey at my own pace and that's what everyone should do take your own journey at your own pace and understanding that there will be times where you'll lose attachments with people but also there are times with disattachment and we're struggling with attaching with anybody in the first place can also make things difficult and you understand to yourself you may not know this but also you may understand that hey I'm struggling to attach with people I also like to be alone and that's completely fine it's your choice but understand that everyone has their own path to take and no one is here to judge or say what you're doing right or what you're doing wrong so thank you all so much please look after yourselves and look out for each other and I'll see you all very soon next time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for always tuning into my channel. Das Adanya is Nova Zelandi. Is Pasiba Bushoya. Paka.